Hi everyone and welcome to the Don't Talk To Me podcast. I'm Venus. I'm Brad. And I'm Ashlyn. So this week we're going to do something a little bit different. So most weeks if you have been tuning in, which hopefully you have because we're fucking great, um, we normally crap on for 45 minutes about crap. It's true. But yeah. <laughs> This week, we're going to do um, a little bit of a Mental Health Week special. So by the time this comes out on uh, Wednesday of this week, which will be uh, the 9th of October, um, Thursday, which is the 10th, is actually International Mental Health Awareness Day. So we thought we would um, have a bit of a chat about our lived experience, do some education um, and then we'll finish on a very hand, uh, special hand-picked finish of the week. Perfect. Which is cheating, by the way, but it's fine. <laughs> yeah, we normally random roll, but it's fine. We'll just, True. you know. Last week's random roll <laughs> fucking traumatized me, it, so yeah. I need a break. I mean, it traumatized everyone who listened. <laughs> true. I don't know true. if we have any listeners left, to be honest. Are it's they, true. Are I they mean, Dan from Denmark is like, did he just say he'd fuck someone without arms and legs? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Dan from Denmark never going to be able to eat hot pockets or hot dogs ever again. Oh my god! And oh. he's never going to be able to use them as a splint. Um, <laughs> as you can hear, I sound like shit this week because yep. I got a bacterial infection in my throat. That's why I think it's bacterial. Brad yeah, I sucked too making... many dicks. <laughs> that yeah, hot I got splint. I got too many slurpees behind the Seven Eleven. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, this week we're talking about mental health and how it impacts us and how we feel like it impacts others um, and what we could do better um, with the system, which is obviously a huge issue. We're not going to be able to um, hit on everything this week uh, because we are just three fucking idiots. Um, but we have a uh, someone who's worked very closely in the um, mental health area, Miss Venus, um, and she has a lot of... Uh, she has a lot of insider knowledge when it comes to how things work in this country. Um, yeah, and I have how a piece of paper. Maybe don't work. Yeah, I have a piece of paper that tells me that I know things that I paid thirty six thousand odd dollars for. <laughs> so, um, how's that going? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, it's good. Yeah. So, could have been a bad bitch. I could have been a bad bitch. Non-committal, but instead I committed to fucking a career, debt. just a little. <laughs> Yeah, mm, student debt, love it. Mm. Yep, everyone Speaking here. Of student debt and mental health. Yeah, well, as I was gonna say, I, I was going to start out with a few little statistics for people so that we can be super educational. Ooh. And these are Australian-based statistics because we live in Australia, and if what you don't you live in Australia, uh, these were updated. Two thousand seventeen was the last one, wasn't it? Uh, it depends where you're going. They, ha- they don't really change very much. Yeah. They're, they haven't really. So this is from 2009 that I'm looking at. The other one that I'm looking at, which is from 2018, there's literally no difference in the data. Mm. So um, so just under half the total population in Australia will have a mental health condition at one point or another. So 45.6% or 0.5%. I've got two different statistics here. Hold up. It changed by 0.1 of a percent in a decade. There you go. Um, And one in five people, so 20%, are going to have a mental health condition at any point in time. So in Australia, about 20% of people at the moment will have some type of mental health condition. Um, Most common of those is is anxiety, um, which we're all a little group of anxious little bunnies in this podcast so mm-hmm. we're very familiar with it <laughs> <laughs> super so yeah uh, um we we're gonna talk start off by sort of talking about our own lived experience of mental health i don't know if anyone particularly wants to go first i'm happy to go first i mean yeah i think uh you should probably lead um tell us how dark to go but um <laughs> <laughs> Yes, uh, please. Yeah, if you want to carry the torch, that'd be nice. Yeah, and just for those listening, so there, there might be a couple of trigger, well, I guess be prepared for triggers during this. We're going to talk very open and, and frankly. Um, for some people, there might be things that hit a little close to home, so just, you know, listen listen with caution. Um, we won't be going into anything mm. too graphic. Um, we'll, put the, we'll put the trigger warnings in the description. Um, exactly. So just if you want to read in the description just to see what we're talking about. Yeah. Um, 
And if that's like going to be too difficult for you or it's going to trigger like a huge associative episode, trust me, I've been there. Don't worry. We won't feel bad. Just skip 30 minutes. Yeah. Until the finish of the week. Exactly. So, um, so yeah, for me, my lived experience of mental health, um, I come from a family with lots of personality disorders or, or I guess the, what would fall under the label of personality disorders anyway. Um, well, that's one side of my family and then the other side of my family are very um, straight edge sort of normal Um not so much that they're not loving and not into talking about emotions, but just um, I'm probably the weirdest, wacky, wackiest person from that side of the family in terms of how dark I get. Um, so for me, my lived experience with mental health is obviously growing up, um, seeing lots of that. Um, I have a mum who was awesome enough to break the cycle um, and kind of stopped perpetuating a lot of the intergenerational trauma that had happened um, in her family. Um, unfortunately, be, even though my mum tried to shield me from a lot of stuff, I'm a survivor of child sexual abuse. Um, and later in my life, um, my first adult relationship ended up being um, domestically violent with high levels of emotional abuse and very low levels of physical abuse. But um, with that kind of trauma background, Obviously, as a a kid and then as a uh, very young adult, I developed lots of um, sort of anxiety and depression traits in particular. Um, I was also bullied severely for being really different um, pretty much throughout my schooling. Like I had people spit in my face. I had girls befriend me literally so they could destroy my things. Um, I ended up leaving school in year 11 because of that so basically for me I find trusting people really difficult um when I'm getting to know new people I'm really anxious because I have this sort of subconscious expectation that people will hurt me um and with that obviously comes a lot of loneliness and um for me depression um and then in the last few years I've also been diagnosed with like a chronic health condition where I have chronic pain as well so for me um I've had to get really on top of my mental health because if I go into you know get too anxious or go into a really depressed state my pain goes through the roof so I kind of have been forced (laughs) over recent years um to have to get my shit together otherwise I make myself really sick and um, I've also been a carer for someone in my family who has a mental health condition, but that's their story, so I won't share too much of that. That's good. Damn. Thank you for sharing. Damn. Follow up. Um, yeah, that, that was that was not too heavy. It was just, just heavy enough, I think. Yeah, um, nailed it. Uh, Ashlyn, did you want to go second? And then I'll go last because mine's probably a bit, like, long. And yeah, drawn fair, out fair, and fair. Yuck. Brad's got the heavy shit. Yeah, <laughs> Brad's will be the longest. Mine will probably voice, be the my shortest. Voice has then been depressed today. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, I I had a pretty pretty good childhood. I had a, well, I had a really good childhood, um, but I did coming into puberty and coming into my teenage years did struggle with depression a lot. Essentially, once I hit sort of 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, that pretty much my whole teenage years were riddled with anxiety and depression, uh, suicidal tendencies, attempting suicide multiple times, uh, having issues with cutting and that sort of thing. Um, I don't talk about it often. I don't know if I've actually talked about it with you guys before. One time. Um, Once, I think, yeah. 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 So that's pretty much been my issue, which I am glad to say that I think I'm I'm over now I've come through the other side um I mean you still have days but yeah. not as bad as I once mm-hmm. was so it's that thing of coming out of it where it's every day like yeah. when it's every day it's bullshit and it's like you know I always talk about having like um slip ups so like having days where like I really haven't managed my shit very well I just end up in a black hole but it's like that's one day whereas like I think back to the worst parts and it was like every day like every day for an extended period and getting past that's really good constant yeah yeah Yeah. all right Brad let's (laughs) let's fucking hear it (laughs) here we go Beach. 
Um, so essentially, I had a pretty good childhood until about um, seven. I experienced um, some childhood sexual abuse from a neighbor. It was a female, which is not often that happens. No. Uh, child sexual abuse is usually perpetrated by men. Um, but I was sexually abused by my one of my sister's friends, um, which led on for about four years, um, which left me super, um, well, first of all, I went through puberty way too fucking young, way too young. Um, and that led me to being really angry and emotional as a child <laughs> and not really learning how to develop those emotions properly um, as, you know, as an adult, an adult in quotation marks. Um, but coming into puberty, I sort of um, had this huge depression that sort of washed over me and it, it came out as like, because I'm gay, um, I grew up in a, they, they, my parents weren't overly homophobic, right? They were, um, they'd make jokes and they'd say like, because my dad's a prison guard, he'd be like, oh, like the gays at work and blah, 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 and like tell stories about um, the poofs at work. And I was like, well, yeah, hi. Um, but he was adamant once the sort of, because it was only like, if you remember, like 2007, 2008, that people really started saying, oh, this is not a bad thing. This is like yeah. the people who weren't religious, like it's just pretty much religious nuts now who are like, gays are bad. Um, the people who were atheists had no reason to hate gays, but they still did because- yeah pretty much people did what the church told them to do, even if they weren't a part of the church. Um, and uh, it was only then that my parents were like, oh, if you are gay, um, that's fine. You can come out. Like, we won't hate you, blah, blah, blah. And that's when my brother came out. He's also gay, I think. Um, I don't really talk to him. Um, but uh, I came out when I was 16 after um, some stuff with cancer. Um, I decided... Look, if I'm going to die, I have to be honest. Um, and I came out. I was seeing a guy named Harry, who's my roommate now, um, <laughs> uh, which is confusing in itself. Um, but Story for another uh, day. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Story for another fucking whole podcast. Jesus Christ. Um, but yeah, g getting cancer at 15 was possibly the best and worst thing that has ever happened to me because... Um, I was self-harming at the point, um, and because I had this disease that is very physical, I had to keep getting checks. I had to keep getting naked and doing fucking scans and, like, um, doing checks. So I could not physically harm myself anymore, so I had to stop self-harming, and it's an addiction. Um, so once I broke the cycle, I was like, oh, I don't need to do this anymore. And there's still points where I'm like, um, I still get the urge sometimes, and it's, it's odd because I haven't been there like that, that low in a very long time. Um, but it still, you know, comes mm -hmm. back and forth. And I was very adamant at school. I was, I was that kid who was, um, who would always wear jumpers and always wear uh, long pants because I didn't want anybody to see and blah, blah, blah. Like, and during summer, it'd be like a 40 degree day and I'd be wearing a jumper and people would be like, why don't you take that off? And I'm like, why don't you suck a dick, bitch? How about that? Um, but yeah, I just became really hostile and shitty to people um, because I was sad and therefore they should be sad, um, which is not healthy. Uh, but I started seeing a psychologist and it's just been a lot better since then, hopefully. Thank God. Um, and I've started taking medication, which my family was also against. They're like, it'll change you. It'll change you. I'm like, I want it to change me. I want to yeah. change. I don't want to be this way. Um but I still struggle um, with some like visceral stuff. Like whenever I have, whenever I leave the house, I'm quite agoraphobic. So I, um, my, my anxiety reaction is physical. So I instantly struggle to breathe. I have to go to the bathroom. Like, and then because um, I was a cancer kid, uh, whenever I'd leave the house, I'd have to go to the bathroom quite a lot. And I was afraid of using the bathroom. So to turn into like this, self-fulfilling prophecy of being worried I'd have to use the bathroom and that worry would make me have to use the bathroom. Yeah. Which would, you know, Catch me too. A, yeah, exactly. It would turn to a huge feedback loop and I'd just 
get super duper anxious and super duper fucked up and I get sick and I dropped out of school and because I couldn't stay in class for like longer than 30 minutes at a time and um, I go out and vomit and my teachers would be like oh why don't you just come back after you vomit and I'm like because it's not it's not about the vomiting it's about anxiety like I'm, I'm I feel like I'm gonna die um, yeah I feel yeah. like things are so much better than they used to be with that kind of shit though because like yes. I remember when I was in high school which granted was like five six years before you I always forget what our age difference is but like half a decade pretty much before yeah. you like um I remember my mum coming in as a mental health professional so my mum is a um as a social worker by trade but also has masters in psychotherapy and is a very very skilled um individual I remember my mum picking up on my bullying and um this is when it was probably the worst like the worst my bullying had ever been um and the teachers then just like had no fucking idea like didn't want to address yeah. the behavior kind of did the scapegoat thing on the anti-social student which was me because like i would just shut down like people are fucking scary i'm a i'm a mental health professional now and like i have a social work degree so i'm supposed to be social and like still people scare me i just know how to manage people and manage myself a lot better than i did when i was a teenager but um sidestepping when i was in my social work degree um part of what we did was looking at social work in schools and just doing that the attitude's a lot better like even in primary school now like they're picking up on the bullying they're managing the bulliers rather than the bully like the bully e if you like yeah. um that never would have fucking happened and like with things like panic attacks like they'll actually let kids leave and go manage their shit the way that they need to manage their shit rather than going no that's fucking unacceptable because you're in this like missing five minutes of class that you wouldn't be able to concentrate in any way because you're so anxious that your um frontal cortex would just be shutting down frontal cortex is thinky brain for those listening that don't know um brain. my experience Scientific in school, name for it. uh my teachers didn't really get it uh, like yeah. I'd be able to go and have walks and they were like, they knew me as the cancer kid, right? Yeah. So they knew me as physically ill. Mm. And I was like, look, I've been through this thing. I need, I have pain. I have to go leave. And they were like, yeah, fine. You can leave whenever you want. Um, but it was actually getting to school that really, you know, I struggled with because it'd be getting up in the morning and going and facing it. And I wasn't being bullied at that point. Yeah. Um, because my, my school uh, where I went in Frankston was very, very good um when it came to uh community because everyone was kind of like you know how if everyone's at the bottom no one's at the top um, yeah we, exactly. we all came from really terrible socioeconomic backgrounds there was no people who were better than each other so we all just kind of felt like a family yeah um, and i missed so much class that um, and this should be changed, but the legislation said that I could not pass, even though I was passing my sacks and I was passing my exams, yeah. um, I could not mm. pass, uh, which is stupid, honestly, fucking stupid. Mm. Um, yeah. And uh, so I went back the next year and I got bullied fucking horribly. I got horribly bullied. And I told my coordinator, I told my teachers, and they were like, look, just ignore it, just ignore it. I'm like, I can't, and like, he's, like, they're threatening me. Um, yeah. And I wasn't used to it because obviously I'd been at the school for so fucking long that it was not an issue. I'd been there for seven years, you know? Mm. Um, <clears throat> but this, this particular person was just like, whenever I talk in class and I talk a lot in class, um, talking's like my big thing. Um, I was described as a social butterfly in year three. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. he would just like, whenever I'd offer up an answer, which was correct to the teacher, he'd say, shut the fuck up under his breath. And so it was just that, like, constant, like, wearing down of your self-esteem. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, I, I just knew I couldn't do anything because I was the older kid in that mm. class. And I would be, you know, the 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 aggressor, seen as the aggressor. Yeah. Um, and so I just, like, I, I eventually, you know, just stopped going and left. And I went to TAFE. And TAFE was so much fucking better. Um because again everyone was at the bottom so no one's at the top yeah um and they understood that you know chronic illness chronic pain um comes with you have to leave class you have to go to the bathroom you have to go to the kitchen get a fucking drink yeah. of water you have to you know they managed it so much better because it's a school designed for kids who had to leave school 
Mm. Yeah. Um, it's an adult learning environment, so you can actually make your yeah. own fucking decisions about yourself rather than having teachers decide exactly. whether or not you're worthy to go urinate. Yeah. <laughs> Mm. whether or not it's safe for you to go and piddle. Yeah. Because um, I think the other thing as well is, like, when you're in that environment and, like, we're talking about school, but, like, it's the same, like, whether it's school, whether it's a workplace, um, yeah. you know, volunteering, wherever it is, you know, if, even friends group or having those family obligations that you have to do. It's that thing of when you're in that anxiety sort of space, like, you get anxious in the lead up. Yeah. It happens and then you kind of go, oh, fuck, that's over. But then you just have that lingering anxiety knowing that it all has to happen again. Like so Friday afternoon from school, it's like, thank God, and it's like a relief. And like finally by the time your body stops being like shitty and like having those physical symptoms of anxiety, you have to it's go back Monday and do it again, again on Monday. Yeah. yeah, it's just horse shit. Okay. So, but I think in summary, like it's <laughs> trauma is the worst, like as a – practitioner i don't think i've ever met someone that hasn't had some form of trauma yeah. like the most you know the first the, the the only ones that i've had that probably don't have some very specific scenario of trauma that's kind of caused this ongoing sort of ripple effect throughout this person's life and their mental health is those where it's kind of been drug induced but even then like if you unpack what happened when they were using like they had a really bad trip and it's just caused something to go mm -hmm. skew with like <clears throat> so um in terms of i guess managing mental health because we all i think all of us are pretty much in a maintenance period at the moment we're like we're doing okay enough yeah um, and we've got some management strategies and we can get hold our shit together well i can't and you can't but <laughs> well i can usually not literally <laughs> not li not literally not no. literally no. but figuratively with my emotions yes Mostly, yeah. Um, so what are some of your telltale signs that your mental health isn't going well? Um, and what do you do to kind of manage those or at least like bring light to them or try and like nip them in the bud as soon as they happen? Um, I'm really bad at that. So mine, because I have depression and anxiety, it's um, yeah. I will like get into a really bad rut. I'll become quite antisocial, as you guys know. I'll disappear for like a week or two weeks or three months. Um, and uh, once I come out of that, I'm like, oh, hi, guys. And I just expect everything to be the same. Thank God you guys always yeah. treated me, you know, with that respect that I could like dip out when I needed yeah. to dip out. And then dip you out come out of it and you're like, hey, let's do a weekly podcast. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let's make a huge commitment with each other. <laughs> um, but <We're> back. <laughs> hi. Um, but I, it was like, um, I'm still not in a place where I can leave the house like yeah. properly and without, you know, taking gastro stop and making sure I've taken my Lexapro and, um, like getting ready and, you know, doing a lot of self care to do a very simple thing. Um, yeah. And whenever I stop in the car, I'm like, I start like freaking out. Cause I'm like, there's no bathroom in the car. I can't drive the car home. Um, it's, yeah, it's just bad. Um, but whenever I get into that sort of rut, I just try and, um, sleep and give myself rest and let myself recover. Uh, and yeah. I, I feel like that's all I can do, honestly, mm -hmm. when it's, when it's something that like, you know, and it's exhausting. Depression is exhausting. As you know, it's like, you don't want to move. You don't want to, you know, live. You don't want to yeah. like, <laughs> you don't want to eat or sleep. Like it got to the point mm -hmm. where I was so numb that I hadn't peed like urinated for four days um and i was like why is my stomach so fucking big and it was my bladder um and because i wasn't drinking any water it wasn't that bad but like um yeah it was like i you know you you forget you can't feel your own body function yeah like, when you're that dissociated you don't you don't understand pain you don't understand like it's just not a thing um mm. and yeah, I just like it. There's there's nothing I can really do. I mean, I just try and talk. Like, whenever I'm really low and it's something I'm getting better at, it's I just try and talk it out. I just you know tell mm. people if I'm feeling like I have like suicidal ideations or like um, I'm really low or if I'm having panic attacks. A good Harry, um, and that's usually a pretty good anchor. But it's also like like what if they leave? Like, there's always that you know worry that what if that person that you're you know essentially the, the, like tying your boat to their dock what if yeah. you know 
it all falls apart. Um, which happened in Frankston. The the dock <laughs> floated away with a bunch of boats on it. Anyways. Um, <laughs> it did. But yes, it was very funny. Um, and the news guy tried to jump on it and slipped and fell. And it was great. Um, <laughs> so watching things like that would help you boost your mental health. <laughs> <coughs> um, only because I'm a sadist. True. Uh, but right. yeah, what about you guys? Ashlyn, do you want to go? Uh, mine is definitely, I mean, I notice when I'm a lot worse that I'm obviously just tired a lot. And then I don't yeah. want to do anything at all. I'm just... I mean, I'm pretty inherently lazy anyway, but just like yeah. giving into that, like, and just absolutely doing nothing and wanting to sleep all the time, mm -hmm. which I find, especially if I'm not working, even though I hate getting up early for work, not working makes it so much worse because you, yeah. you know, you're like, oh, I don't have to get up no and do routine. anything. I'll just fucking sleep till 1 p.m. and maybe 2 p.m., maybe 3 p.m., yeah. you know, and yeah. it, it just sort of, you know, gives you that, um, feeling that you can just sleep forever because yeah. you don't have anything to actually do mm. um but i find that when i'm getting a little bit darker in my thoughts that i do i do get quite numb like brad said mm. um and i'm i find that i need to sort of pull back and and think about why and i do a lot of meditating which i find helps and yoga because i'm super hipster but it works <laughs> how do you do it yoga in that van <laughs> you do it outside the where van. do you Very do it <laughs> difficultly i can do like some mini yoga in the van Down but with yeah, mainly and that's it pretty so much. what like i can do it on the bed like if i set the bed yeah. up i can yeah. do like more of the kneeling sort of yeah. stuff which is good like just stretching and that sort of stuff but if i want to do full yoga i do have to do it outside yeah so when her and craig have to pass each other in the bus they actually have to do or sorry in the van i should say because it's not a bus they actually have to do yoga to pass one another because it's yeah. so cramped it's they so relaxing mm, we have to like <laughs> cuddle it's nice yeah, it's exactly. good for our relationship it's called it's um irritated koi fish because they're like <laughs> around each other except when i'm like get out of my fucking way i gotta piss Boom, yeah, bitch. Yeah. Like, move. <laughs> yeah. Slam, bitch. I'm about to pop. What about you, Venus? Um, I, uh, there's some things I'm really good at. My depression, I'm really good at picking. So, like, my, I do the same. Like, I get tired. Um, I get cranky and I get really hungry. So, my pituitary gland is, like, so in line with how I'm feeling because I either just want to eat everything or eat nothing and, like, mm my eating habits really change heavily with my mental health. But yeah. what I'm really bad at is when I get anxious, like in a social situation mm -hmm. and it can happen with anyone, like people that I'm like super close to as well. Like if I get anxious or I'm like worried about someone's reaction or like worried about, I don't know, just worried about something um, mm -hmm. that I think is a rational worry at the time, which may not actually be a rational worry in the long term. Um, I get word vomit and I cannot shut the fuck up. <laughs> And it's, yeah. it's so bad. It doesn't matter if it's via texting. It doesn't matter if it's like face to face, like the words just come out. My brain goes like a million miles an hour. And like, I can usually pick myself up that I'm doing it about like a third of the way through my rant. And then sometimes I've stuck my foot in it so badly that I'm just like, well, fuck it. Like damage is done <laughs> yeah. now. I'm going to just finish my point. And damage control, home. shutters down. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> or if, exactly. Or if it's like people I'm close to, I'll be like, I'm anxious. I need to take myself out of this space. I'm a runner. Like my, I, I have an overdeveloped flight response. So for me, it's like I will do a runner. And then once I've got my shit together, I'll come back. Pick so your head around the corner. I beat. Yeah. So that's it. Like for me, how I manage it often is like I pick up on it and I kind of go, oh, shit, this is what's happening. Like mm. give me a minute to kind of. Withdraw. You know. Yeah. Mm. Take a few deep breaths and yeah. kind of center myself, ground myself. Yeah. Um, I take my shoes off a lot. Like if at work, if I'm stressed, I walk around the office with no shoes on because it, I don't so know. That's really popular with your coworkers. <laughs> well, I don't have smelly feet, thank God, because otherwise it would be very unpopular. Um, you probably I'd be a hit with the guys though, if you did. Mm, I um, have that's little slippers that I wear at work <laughs> when I take my I shoes off. I was just off. thinking about how much I'd like to do that at work and then I thought, no. Yeah. Nope. No, no, that's a terrible I idea. don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah. Not in a bit. No, no. 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 <laughs> All right, I do not so those flaws. what Definitely is not. Um, fetish of the week this week, V? 
Well, as I say, we have I have one more question on my list. One oh, more yeah. question, um, which is your go to self care task. And if someone steals yours, fuck it. You, you think of a new one because I want three. <laughs> I'll go okay. last for that reason. Oh, so right. Your go to self care. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, I feel like it'll tie in because masturbation um, <laughs> is, uh, is, you know, I mean, let's just be real. Let's be real with each other. Sex, you know, sex is a huge mood booster. Um, yeah. Uh, Get damn endorphins. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, uh, but self-care. I find myself when I'm really depressed, I don't shave. Um, I find myself like those sort of menial tasks, like, like wiping, no, um, like showering <laughs> and brushing my teeth. They're just like, it's like, I don't get, um, any endorphins back. So my energy is like, no, I, I'm not spending any energy on that when I could just spend energy sleeping and make myself happy. Um, so I find myself like not really taking care of myself, like literal self-care. Um, so I think that stuff is good, like brushing your teeth and shaving and like mm -hmm. make yourself feel pretty, um, even if you don't feel pretty. Yeah, I feel you there. Um, Bradley's picking more than one, B, so, you know, I don't know what the rules are here. <laughs> you can say. She said, well, she you, said at least three, babe. He's taking well, you all said of yoga. <laughs> you said yoga before. And doing I did. I was, yeah, I was like, I already sort of did mine, but yeah, um, exactly. but I also enjoy doing like <clears throat> one of my all time sort of favorite things is to make a cup Human of tea sacrifice. and do like a really long skincare routine. Yeah. So, like, oh, yeah. you know, instead of just like my small one that I normally do, uh, slash sometimes don't do it at night because I'm lazy, um, but Fair. getting out like my face masks and stuff and doing like a proper, oh, I'm taking care of my skin. I feel really good about taking care of my skin properly and like just chilling. For a Do you use bit. those blackhead masks? Um, like the the nose ones. Yeah, I do. I have some, even though they're actually meant to be to awful see. for your skin. They're terrible for you. But I, I would really love to see Craig with one on. Oh, I, he does them all. The time. I really. He, loves oh, he does. Oh mm -hmm. my god. Yeah. My favorite videos on the internet talking about self care. Sorry, is watching those like like blackhead face Pimple masks poppers. being pulled out. Oh my god. Yeah, <sighs> yeah. Those. That's my favorite it's, thing. It's it's horrid, but it's grouse. It's um, it's, it's the OCD it. thing. It feeds mm -hmm. the yeah. OCD clean thing, and it's yeah. great. Yes. I like. I, I almost out. wish I had some myself to do it, but then I'm like, I'm glad I don't. Yeah, I once had. Um, I had. So I used to get pimples with little shards of bone in them when I had my like jaw cancer. Ooh. Um, so essentially, what they do is they get little bits of bone and overbuild the graft so that um, when you vascularize, it has more healthy bone to like go through and grow. Um, but I would get these little shards that would come out of my face like pimples, like whiteheads, and I'd push on them, and then it'd be like sharp, and so I'd get tweezers and like pull them out. But it was like so oh. gross, so fucking oh. gross that whenever I think of pimples now, I think of that. Um, yeah, it's gross. But I oh, once had this funny. one. That was like a white head on my uh, on my face, and I hadn't like bothered with it for so long, and I squeezed it, and it came out as big as a grain of rice. <gasps> it, it That's fucking revolting. You, but I would also not love to see that. Yeah, it was revolting. It was like right when your chin meets your lip, and it Ugh. was like right there. And I just squeezed, and then it instantly came out. It was like ready to go, oh and it came God. out. It was hard. It was hard like a piece of rice. Uh, it was gross. It was fucking gross. Um, okay, um, I'm going to so go good. watch some pimple popping videos. <laughs> yeah, now. exactly, exactly. Right. <laughs> so, kids at home, we have meditation, yoga, make yourself pretty, watch blackhead videos, and meditation, my... masturbation, beautification. Yeah. <laughs> my contribution, Asians. Yeah, my contribution is forcing love on my pets. So, like, if I'm having a really well, bad day, I'll be good. like, Percy, I'm going to lure you with food and you're going to come snuggle me. And because I'm snuggling the dog, the cat, so my cat has anxiety and IBS because my cat is me. Um, <laughs> and because I'm cuddling my dog, my cat will come and sit at the end of my bed and kind of nuzzle near my feet. And that's that's my self-care is, like, fur animals yeah. just Aww. flock to me. Flock I to like me. Yeah. All right, let's get on to Fetish of the Week. Fetish of the week. All right. So we said fetish of the week was uh, masturbation. It's technically yep. manophilia, which means uh, enjoying masturbation more than you do sex with other people. 
It's also it's also autosexual. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I mean, as someone who is bisexual and has primarily had most of her sexual partners as a uh, straight, very very <laughs> straight <laughs> men, <laughs> I can understand this fetish because yeah. a lot of people don't know what the fuck they're doing. <laughs> mm-hmm. <clears throat> to be I fair. You. I feel like most sex has an aspect of masturbation, does yeah. it not? Yeah, for because, sure. Because, like, you, how many times, and this is, like, something I know nothing about, how many times have you as a woman orgasmed just by getting a dick inserted in you? Zero. <sighs> Wait, like, with friction? <laughs> I don't even think about it. With friction or just, like, one plunge and it's like, yes, daddy. <laughs> yeah, that. <laughs> But like, no. I mean, obviously, friction over time would stimulate the clitoris. But um, it, if, I if, don't think, yeah, yeah. Without without clitoral stimulation, I think I've had like my number of sexual partners is sorry, mum, uh, is up in the thirties, <laughs> the low thirties. Oh. Um, so yeah. I've probably had four sexual partners. Mm that have actually been able to get me to organ yeah get me to orgasm i'm trying to do it very clinical so i don't freak out my parents who fucking listen to this shit jesus christ just (laughs) want them to listen to fetish of the week and plus your your mom is very clinical like we talked about masturbating her the other day didn't we we did Um, we did (laughs) you guys are gonna love her um call her mel she loves that she hates Um, mel (laughs) she loves that um but i feel like masturbation is a very healthy part of sex yeah um, absolutely so i do get this fetish but when it replaces sex i feel like masturbation becomes toxic when you're when you're replacing social interaction with it um like i when i was younger and every fucking guy gets to this point i was masturbating 13 times a day that's hectic yeah that's i hear that fucked. a lot from guys that's it's crazy up. that is a lot of tissues i well yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How but does the I, friction not just I like deforest. burn it off? I don't know. Because I have a foreskin, so. Um, but you're yeah. Jewish, Bradley. I'm Jewish by blood, not by practice. <laughs> um, we're, it's probably we, good. we were excommunicated Jews, so we didn't do any of the Jew stuff. Oh, but like, you get um, to kick your little. Stuff. Uh, but yeah, you get to kick um, your hoodie. Yeah, just a foreskin. It's it's a go team. Beautiful. Yeah, I mean. I agree. Yeah, I agree with this fish of the week for sure. Like, I think even for me, like as a teenager, before I started having sex, even though, I mean, I started having sex at 15 or just gone 15. So I started quite early, but like I was masturbating before that. And I was yeah. like, oh, this is great. Like, you know, even when you're young and you sort of masturbate and you don't know what you're doing. Yeah. And then. I sort of was like, oh, this is, you know, like once I realized what I was doing and then I was like, oh, like sex must be like really good then if this is what this is like. And then, yeah. you know, you have your first time having sex and you're like, wow, you're that like, was wow, trash. That was not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was not at all good. That was yeah. terrible. Yeah. Nobody I mean, obviously knows it gets better, but... yet. Nobody knows yeah. how to warm you up. Nobody knows yes. anything. Nobody uses lube. Correct. Ugh. Correcto. 15 year old me was like, what the fuck is this shit? Yeah. Yeah, I can relate. Has anyone ever heard of just just probably diverting slightly? Has anyone ever heard of someone having a decent time when they lost their virginity? Because I know no one. Um, that would turn people into masturbation forever. <clears throat> I probably Craig. I had a pretty boring time at like. That's not true. So, um, my first time like consensually was like with my ex partner harry um and we had sex for like eight hours it was a really good time um but we had sex like Ooh. 10 times like lionel richie um, star yeah exactly um but it was real i had a really good first time quote unquote um but it wasn't technically my first time yeah um, but my first like consensual sexual like happy experience was that so i can't say mine was bad honestly because like I was 16 or 17. I knew what I was like, I knew vaguely what I was doing because I'd watched too much porn. Um, but yeah, yeah, so mine wasn't at, at all that bad. Well, you're a fucking unicorn, aren't you? Yeah, yeah exactly. Sure. <laughs> Maybe 
Maybe I've just talked to too many girls about their first time because yeah. everyone's just been like, eh. But I feel like guys yeah. on guys is easier. Wouldn't the rates yeah. of people who had good sexual experiences, like first sexual experiences, when you both have the easy organ? Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. It's like, well, I was actually like, a, I had a great flutist. Time. Yeah, yeah, the flute's easy compared to the fucking mandolin. Like, yeah, no. Mm. That's, that's I also a- think for girls, it's pain- like, I mean, I don't know this. Like, I, um, this is going to sound so fucking shit because it's like one of those things that people are like, oh, it's an over myth. But I genuinely, my hymen broke horse riding. I fell off a horse, landed the wrong <laughs> way. My legs went fucking everywhere. And that's how I, you know. <laughs> um, so I didn't have that painful experience. But like talking to some of my friends, like for them, it was excruciating. Like, again, that yeah. would turn me off sex forever. I just want to Some people, well. like some people's hymens are so thick. Yeah. Like, yeah. They haven't separated from the uterine wall at all. They yeah, don't no, go from the uterine wall. Don't yeah. They? I didn't find it to be extremely no. painful, but just like uncomfortable there's, and just like, eh, this is not what I was expecting. Mm-hmm. So your hymen's like, it's like a flap of skin and there's yeah. still an opening there, but it's very small. So when it, pierces open it like stretches mm. it basically so where does it grow from like the vaginal entrance and like into the vaginal wall your uterus is like up above your cervix so you've got like a uterus where babies grow you have the cervix then you have a vaginal canal and then you have oh a vaginal my god opening. i'm such an idiot and the oh vaginal canal god. is like usually about thing. yeah the vaginal canal is usually like 10 centimeters so you've got like a bit yeah. between yeah the vag- the vagina it's a yeah. vagina Vagina. Welcome to our educational podcast. <laughs> Mental like health how, and pussy. <laughs> literally last week I was g- gloating about how I knew more about vaginas than straight men, which is true, still true. <laughs> um, but yes, yes. I I, yes. I I don't know why I thought uterus was the whole thing. I think I meant, yeah, anyway. You're sick. Just use that excuse. You're sick. Yeah, You're but, delirious. It's mm. fine. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. uh. Ending the podcast on a high note, when you're watching uh, porn to masturbate. Just fight uh, off to us. Tentacles or no <laughs> tentacles? Oh, God, no. <laughs> oh, man. God, no. Can you I'm imagine go the a... pock marks? No. Have you ever been sucked by an octopus? Oh, don't no. they have little teeth on those things They have too? beaks. They have well, beaks yeah, no, in the middle. Have, yeah, but they don't, the tentacles themselves, the, like the little suckers don't have teeth, but they have little tiny, like, barbs like little yeah. muscles Mm-mm. yeah gross no, fuck that <laughs> <laughs> um i ain't about that but uh, yeah no i can't i can't do it i cannot do it and there's like when i was like very young when i thought i was still straight i watched this video of a japanese girl with like real life t- i'm almost vomiting thinking about it um <laughs> sorry um are you about to talk about tub girl like, no well i don't know okay. what that is um, but it was this girl, um, it was this girl and she was being fucked with, by like IRL tentacles, like, like actual tentacles. Cool. Like, like alive? And, no, not like a real octopus. Oh. So they were fake and they were made of rubber, but they were okay, like, thank God. it was like a real girl. It wasn't hentai. Um, and it was like, she was having this fake cum poured all over it. I hope it was fake cum. Oh. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And Bradley isn't vomiting at that. He's vomiting at the woman, just so we're clear. I'm vomiting <laughs> at the idea of sitting and getting sprayed with fake cold cum as a room full of Japanese <laughs> men watch you. Yeah. It's just like, oh, oh, God, no. Oh, 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 oh. No, no tentacles. No tentacles. Fuck no. It's scarred for life, life. Brad. It's gay for life. It's scarred for All life. Right. That's, what That's what fucking turned me. All right, so... Well, welcome to Wednesdays. Um, on Wednesdays, we wear pink and we talk about tentacles. Um, but yeah, get used to it, bitch. Bye. 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 Uh. <laughs> We're going to have another burp.